Alright guys, here's just a quick overview of how the um, the one kilowatt generator <clears throat> to be honest I called it a one kilowatt generator but you could get a lot more than one kilowatt out of it if you put more voltage in seems to be more voltage dependent than anything anyway this switch here can handle up to 240 volts Hey, sorry, 250 volts, so it could handle mains voltage if I wanted. Right, but the minute I'm only putting in 130 volts, and that's because I've got these three here in series that are 20 volts, so that's 60 volts. Right. I've got this adapter here, which is 40 volts, so those two there is 100, and the amp meter goes up to 30 volts. Dead simple, so we've got 130 volts on the input. Okay, and 130 volts goes here and here. That's where you connect the voltage. And then I'll connect this amp meter up in series with here in the power supply. So you can see how many amps at 130 volts is going into the machine. But I just want to show you Quick, quickly just run down how this is wired up to this transistor. Okay, so this machine, this device comes with three coils as it's an originally a three phase motor and except these three are terminated and connected to each other. It makes it a three phase motor. So you have to separate those three common connections and add a wire so we've got three coils one two three or sorry one two three right uh, and this picture here C3 is connected to your load now that's what I've been connecting to this extension cable and been plugging everything into this thing here uh, to show you that wire coming out the circuit, it's right here. So these two wires is my AC out, and they just go to that plug there. When everything's running, obviously I put those caps in parallel with that. Anyway, C1, which in this case is this blue wire here. These two blue wires make up coil 1, C1. Now that's where C1 is where, come all the way down here, is where the positive input supply goes. So you can see here, that blue wire, that's where my positive input supply goes. And this branch off here is this red wire here go to that rectifier and this branch off C1 here where the diode is the opposite side of this rectifier which is gone to here and then there's the bulb and the capacitor there so that's C1 that's this blue coil there now C2 coil number 2 will be the will be the two yellow ones yep so C2 it's two yellow wires they actually change here because I ran out of yellow but anyway one end of C2 goes to the base of the transistor and the other end of C2 goes to the emitter or the transistor or if you're using a MOSFET one side will go to the gate and the other side will go to the emitter of the transistor and that's it
Um, just make sure C2 is only 10 turns on each leg because you'll burn this chip unless you know other ways to reduce the voltage which would be much more beneficial for this side of things, this black EMF side of things. Uh, the rotor itself is just exactly what it says. It's a rotor but it's got these big ceramic magnets and they're pretty big chunky things. Anyway, so I'm going to run this amp meter in series with the power supply so we can see how much amperage the device is consuming and I'm going to put a voltmeter on it so you can see what the voltage is as well so you can calculate your amps, yeah, your watts, your wattages. Alright, um, so far everything's disconnected so I'm just going to pause the video, connect everything up together, put the amp meter in, I'll get a voltage meter on this side so we can see what the volts coming out is. I'll use a tachometer to get a reading on this. So once that's gone I'll use this and we'll get a reading. So I'm just gonna pause a moment, pause the video for a moment. And to put this back together this just goes on top. And there's a big screw that goes in here. It keeps all nice and secure. Once you've done that, get a spanner. Make sure it's nice and tight. Okay, so I'll connect all the power up and then I'll replay it. Alright, guys, I've connected this multimeter up onto the input side. Positive negative here so when that's fired up we'll see what the input voltage is back in it all right guys so i hooked up the power and the amp meter and the voltage meter so we can see exactly what watts this thing is consuming now those two meters are connected up here okay before I even put this load on. Let's just get her running. So right off the bat, it's running at 1.7 amps. So we're talking about maybe 180, 180 amps. But, uh, no, this is not connected to anything yet. Just an open circuit. Those two wires there are coil free. So I'm going to pause the video and connect up to here. Alright, so I've connected these two wires to that plug and I'm going to connect that cat bank in parallel here. Should be able to hear the difference in RPMs. 
Alright, so now the output is here. C3 is now connected to here, which is this. Alright. Yeah. Since adding that capacitor bank, we've had a volt. Uh, our amperage has increased, but our voltage has decreased quite significantly. All right. So that's what we're running at now for the fun bit. This here is a 100 watt heater. All right. Let's switch that on. At the minute, it's cold. Alright. So if you want to do a water treating. We've got about 180 watts there. So far, I'm only running 100 watt here. Yeah. Can you connect this bulb? That's six watts. That's the voltage in amperage. Um, we've got this power supply unit, it's about 500 watts, let's just go ahead and turn that on. Oh wait, that's the Variac, hang on. Oh yeah, so it can run this Variac up until the max voltage it puts out. As you can see, That's not what we're here for, is it? And the power supply plug is here. Okay, we're now running this power supply. And there's your meter readings. And just to prove that this power supply is actually working, I've connected it up to this DC motor, or I will have. I mean, I'm sure you believe me anyway, but we'll get it running. Let me just pause the video. Alright, I've now. Here they went to this DC motor to this power supply. You can hear it turning away. And look at the amp, the meter readings. I'm putting quite a lot of force on that. The power supply is definitely working. I can't stop that motor. Uh, right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause the video get a voltage read in here and we'll see what the volts on the output side are saying. Right guys I've connected this meter up to the output side so we can see that switch of us now that there is 
112 volts AC Reconimator, it's on the AC side uh, This is with no load Input voltage, input amperage uh, I'm going to start switching things on Okay, that's the 100 watt heater Input voltage, input amperage uh, Pepper supply Switch that on It's on And Lastly I've connected the variac up to this Transformer here Just to see what kind of high voltage we can get out of it So let's turn that on Set to max Get a screwdriver Okay so we can get some really nice hot arcs off of that Funny thing is, when we put draw an arc from here, our voltage drops down to 20 volts. So we've got 100 watt resistive load, an 8 kVA inductive load, and I'm not too sure what the transformer load would be be called resistive load maybe and the power supply unit running which can power that motor no problem so with everything turned on that's a wadge <laughs> 